All right, so here I have in front of me a cone, right? I want to get on my paper a plumb line. I want to understand the top ellipse and the bottom ellipse. I want to measure that cone just the way I always did and get my height to width proportion correct. And I want to judge where the shadow is coming. It seems to be just a little bit off the vertical. It's like two minutes after the hour over there. I can make a lot of mistakes with my charcoal pencil because I know they're all going to get eaten up by that delicious velvety black lighter. So this speeds me up. Notice that at the top of this, if the light's above it, the top of this would be light and this would be light, right? This would be core, this would be reflected, and this would be cast on the table. My cast is headed off this way a little bit. Now notice here one more thing I want you to take note of. The line that I drew here for the shadow core to come down through this way, this shadow core line between light and dark is also the point where that hits the table where the shadow is going to start to come off on the table. So do you see right here how this line comes down here and then it connects to the shadow coming right there? If you draw a mug, and the shadow comes down here, and then you've got a shadow connecting over here, we know that's not right. Yeah? We know that the shadow wouldn't connect over here. The shadow has to connect here. Now, is it gonna go this way, or is it gonna go that way, or whatever? That you're gonna have to observe, right? But we do know it connects straight across. So if this is where that cylinder sits on the table and the shadow connects here, I can go straight across that and say this is where the shadow would connect over there. Then if I draw my cone in there, I can say this is going to be my shadow over here. And this is where the shadow is going to go down there. Right? And when it comes time to draw this in, I would like you to take, this is the contour going up and down. So you can do this certainly to get some, some color in there or some shadow. But I'd like you to use these lines here to understand that this is a round object. Do more of them where you want it to go darker. So just do more lines along that edge of shadow core and then take your finger and rub it so it gets even darker. On the table, I'm probably gonna go vanishing point and or horizontal. And then I'm going to look for this. I need this to be darker here. This is my cast shadow. I can lay down a lot of black right there and then I can just smudge it out towards the lighter end. I can get this really nice and black in here. Smudge that towards the reflected light. Of course I'm making a mess over here. Whatever. I've got an eraser. I can clean that up. Look at a split. I want to make my top show that the light's above it, so I'm going to make that light there. Notice that I've reduced this black line here. You're seeing it's a little darker on top than it is in front, so I'm sort of doing that. Now here I'm going to reserve a little bit, or actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade this all the way across. I'm just going to pull some of this stuff over there and get my paper really dirty. Those of you who hate getting your hands dirty and all that, or you have smudges on your paper and stuff, that's not going to be really useful. It's actually useful sometimes to do this, because then you can go in here and say the highlight in that cone should be halfway between shadow core and the edge. Depending, you'll find it. I want to draw with my eraser in here a little bit, clean that up. Throw off my finger in here to make that a little bit softer. My last step is to make sure that my 
light, the gray of my light is going to be a light gray. And the, the gray over here for my reflected light needs to be a little bit darker. So the, the last rule is nothing in the shadow should be as light as anything in the light. So now at the end, I'm just sort of pushing things back and forth, making sure that I have five different gradations and that that's going to look something like that. The cube we need to talk about. What I see when I draw the cube, what I expect to see. This may be a bit isometric. Of course, I'm going to draw it slower if I'm being graded on it. Um, but I also can change those, those things. I see that this is in the shadow, right? So this is my shadow side. These two sides are not. I'm seeing them just about the same. So it's kind of like I've got a highlight coming. Maybe I want to rub this up and down and back and forth. So remember, this moves in two dimensions. One's to vanishing point, right? One's up and down. This moves in two dimensions, which is vanishing point left and vanishing point right. So smudge across that way. And I'd say the ant would walk across here and down, across here and down. They'd walk this direction and then this direction. Right? So I'm getting my matrix grid in here. I'm just drawing more lines on this side in the matrix grid until it becomes like shadow. Or when I go to color this in, I'm moving this according to those lines, okay? This sort of does this kind of thing where you'll see shadow core along this edge and this edge very clearly. And then you'll see reflected light here because these lines that go off, and if I drew through this cube, I'd find this other corner to know where this line came out. So down here, I've got to have cast shadow. Maybe I'm going to move that flat so it feels like it's the table. Move it up and down to get it nice and black. Then I'm going to start making these lines more accurate maybe lightening this line up a little bit if I see a lot of reflected light down in this area down here. Maybe I want to take my eraser and clean up some of these edges. I don't need or want clean drawings this week, but I do need to know where your edges are. So that's where I want you to go in and put some detail. Just like in week one, where I wasn't really concerned if your lines were too long or if they were going exactly um, right. So I have extra lines in here. This is just fine. I've got no problem with that. But I may want you to go in here and say this needs to get flatter and this needs to get flatter so that that becomes actually what I'm seeing in perspective. See how I change that cube? Now these two aren't meeting up, so I've got to change this a little bit. Maybe say this is going to be the end of my cube here. Then I'm going to look at these two and I'm going to say one of them is my light and one of them is my highlight. So I'm going to rub around a little bit and I'm going to decide which one's my highlight. Um, I move the light a little bit. This one looks lighter than that because it's coming from, from up above. So I might take my kneaded eraser here and get this back up to paper white. Last step of all. <laughs> 